we're back in session. Everybody now should have the written copy of the amendment recommended by Councillor Baker. The chair recognizes Council Baker. Okay. Um, Mr. Cork, please read that in, into the record. Amendment of Council Frank Baker, at docket number 1132, partial override number four, as moved shall be amended as follows. Increased property management personnel services, $584,896 for a salary increase for municipal officers adding $584,896 to the line on the tax order. To balance these increase overrides, I recommend the following decrease overrides. What, number one, property management contractual, $600,979. Thank you. The chair, recognize, the chair recognizes Council Baker. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, <clears throat> Alex read the amendment I don't think I need to re-read re it, but this, this allows money to be in place. Uh, some people have asked if this is a collective bargaining issue. I don't think that we're bargaining this, but this will allow, this will put the money, put the <coughs> money in place for, the, um, for these men and women to get the raises that we all think that, that they should get. Um, I hope it passes. I think, I don't even know what I think at this point, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, um, yeah, I think being a city worker, if, if we can allow underpaid people to get, and, and even still, this probably isn't going to get them to where they're feeling excellent about their life, but they're feeling a little bit better. I don't think that we should even have to be doing this as an amendment in this, in this process. I think it should have already happened. Mm -hmm. So therein lies my problem. In, in, um, if this is a process that we can do something like this, then uh, I would appreciate the votes if people feel inclined to do so. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Council Baker. Was there a second on Council Baker's? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Delta vote. No, we're, we're still discussing it. Okay. Um, the chair recognizes Councilor Fernandez Anderson. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Councilor Flynn. I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, just really think that, uh, thank uh, Council Baker for making this amendment. I think this is the process. This is engaging and um, making recommendations. Previous recommendations from other colleagues um, didn't work, but hopefully this does. Um, I support it, and thank you for putting it on the floor. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. The chair recognizes Councilor Coletta. Councilor Coletta, you have the floor. Thank you, uh, Council President Flynn. Um, so I, I do support uh, our officers getting a raise. Um, I think we all know that our officers need to be paid more. I do have concerns about this, um, this process. I think we can't be conducting contract negotiations through the budget process. It needs to happen at the collective bargaining table. It does set precedent. Um, for every other union coming through the council and it will affect every other union. Um, I think today I'm going to be voting present on this, but I do appreciate the, the, the move and I do uh, support in general um, our wonderful officers getting a raise and earning a, a dignified um, salary. Thank you. Thank you, Council Clutter. The chair recognizes Council Flaherty. Council Flaherty, you Thank you, Mr. Chair. I concur that I believe this is a collective bargaining issue, but through the chair to the clerk, the, the, well, it's my understanding, will this be two votes? There'll be a vote on the amendment to the amendment? And then a second vote on the amendment. So one vote on the on one vote, and then another vote on the partial override as amended. Got it. So that's the first vote is going to be the amendment to the amendment being offered by uh, council from District Three. That's one vote, and then there'll be a second vote on that the now being all right. Thank yes. you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Clark. Anyone else looking to speak on this? The chair recognizes the chair chair recognizes Council Murphy. Council um. Murphy. Thank you, and thank you, Councilor Baker, and to the municipal police who came up here in a hearing and did all this work, because this actual number came from all the work that they did to explain what they would need to give themselves just a little bit more, which was already described. But just to be clear, does this 
amendment to the partial override number four take away the increase to the Veronica Smith, or will we have partial 4A and B? Is that gone now that it's in this form? And just to also, so I don't need to speak again, I'm okay if it is, because I do know that Aid Strong 250,000 Councillor Braden did get, the mayor did approve $250,000 to go to Veronica Smith Senior Center for a different specific issue, but I'm okay if it is, but just to be clear. Thank you. Thank you, Council Murphy. Thank you. The Chair recognizes uh, Council Royal, then, then to Council uh, Fernandez Anderson. Council Royal. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm not going to get up because it's just a question, uh, not a speech, but uh, the Veronica Smith, I believe, is in Austin Brighton, so I guess the if the amendment impacts that, I guess the only way I would have an issue with this amendment is if the councilor from uh, Austin Brighton was going to vote for this partial override as it was written. Otherwise, then it makes no difference uh, in, in my perspective, and I would support this amendment as it's written here. I'm voting for this amendment the way it's either originally constructed or under this. My understanding, and I just want to be clear if that's accurate, is that under the amendment from Frank Baker, the Veronica Smith money leaves, which would matter to me only if there's a commitment to voting for it as it is from the councillor of that district. Otherwise, I'll vote with the amendment. Thank you. Thank you, Council Royal. The chair recognizes Council Braden. Council Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you for your consideration um, with regard to the Veronica Smith Senior Center. Um, last year, we managed to get some funding for the Veronica Smith for programming through the ARPA process. Uh, and we, we haven't got that opportunity this year, so, uh, but I do know that uh, in, the, in our discussions in the budget process that uh, Age Strong will be getting more money for uh, contractual services, which would, I, I anticipate would include some monies for programming. So um, I, in the light of the needs of our municipal officers, I'm happy to take my, uh, my ask for $50,000 off the table for Veronica Smith at this point. Thank you. Thank you, Council Braden. Before, before we, get, we take a vote, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak on this. The floor is yours, President Flint. Thank you, Council Royal. And um, thank you, Councilor B Baker, for bringing this forward. It's an important issue. We see the security officers, municipal off officers, I should say. We see them every day when we come to work. We pass them on the first floor and the third floor, knowing that we're making $103,000 a year. Pretty soon we'll be making $115,000 and the people that are providing security in this building are making $20 an hour. There's something fundamentally unfair about that. And I have a hard time every time I do walk through that door seeing, seeing the young people that are protecting, protecting us, protecting the mayor's office and city employees and the public providing <clears throat> professional security, saving people's lives, really, also. Um, but I have a hard time when I pass that door seeing them, knowing that they're going home every night unable to pay their bills. I was talking to one young officer, in. She was telling me she, she was looking at a can, of, a can of Campbell's soup. And she was looking at the price tag of a, Campbell, a, a thing of Campbell's soup. And I don't know what it was, $2 or $1.60 or $1.80, whatever it was. And she had to put the can of soup back on the counter because she couldn't afford it. And here, here she is working 40 hours, 50 hours. <clears throat> working for us, protecting us, and she can't buy a can of soup. Um, I think we're better than that as a city, and 
I think what they're asking for is respect from us as, as a body and some dignity. And I think we, we owe it to people that are there for us. We owe some loyalty back to them as well. And if it doesn't pass, maybe, maybe we give our pay raise up. But I'm, I'm not committed to this because we can't continue walking by people that are, that are saving our lives and, and, they, and they, they have to look at a price of a can of, can of soup. Um, it's unfair and I'm asking my colleagues to respectfully consider um, putting ourselves in their shoes as well. Uh, thank you, Council Royal. Thank you, Ms. President. Anyone else hoping to speak on this? Mr. Clerk, we'll do a um, <clears throat> we'll do a roll call vote. Roll call vote on Councillor Baker's amendment to partial override number four. Councillor Arroyo. Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker. Aye. Councillor Baker, aye. Councillor Braden. Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Coletta. Present. Councillor Coletta, present. Councillor Fernandez Anderson. Council Fernandez Anderson, yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Lujan, yes. Council Lujan, yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Murphy, yes. Council Murphy, yes. And Council Worrell, yes. Council Worrell, yes. 11 votes in the affirmative and one vote present. Just the amendment. Oh, we're almost there. That was just on the amendment. I know. That's exciting. That's just something. So we can imagine the partial So now, Mr. Clerk, now we're on to the partial override as, as amended. Roll call vote on partial override number four as amended. Council Arroyo. Council Arroyo, yes. Council Baker. Aye. Council Baker, aye. Council Braden. Yes. Council Braden, yes. Council Coletta. Okay. Council Coletta, present. Council Fernandez Anderson. Yes. Council Fernandez Anderson, yes. Council Flaherty. No. Council Flaherty, no. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Lara. Yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Louis Jean. Yes. Council Louis Jean, yes. Council Mejia. C. Council Mejia, C. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Murphy, yes. And Councillor Worrell. Yes. Councillor Worrell, yes. Partial override number four, as amended, has passed. <laughs> this is passed. Um, we're on to the the fifth partial override. Um, yep. The chair recognizes Councillor. Fernandez Anderson, Council Fernandez Anderson, you have the floor. This is short. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, this is a short one. Um, I recommend that we override the following increases. Increase Office of um, Prescriptory Budgeting Special Appropriations, $1 million for Prescriptory Budgeting, um, and increase Office of Prescriptory Budgeting Special Appropriations in the amount of $450,000 uh, for Prescriptory Budgeting. To balance these increase overrides, I recommend the following decrease overrides uh, from the Boston Police Department equipment in the total of $1,450,000. Thank you. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Would anyone else like to speak on this matter? Seeing no one, Mr. Clerk, could we do a uh, roll call vote? Roll call vote on partial override number five. Council Arroyo. Yes. Council Arroyo, yes. Council Baker? No. Council Baker, no. Council Braden? No. Council Braden, no. Council Coletta? No. Council Coletta, no. Council Fernandez Anderson? Yes. Council Fernandez Anderson, yes. Council Flaherty? No. Council Flaherty, no. Council Flynn? No. Council Flynn, no. Council Lara? Uh, yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Louis Jean? Yes. Council Louis Jean, yes. Council Mejia? Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor Murphy? Councilor Murphy, no. 
And Councilor Worrell? No. Councilor Worrell, no. Seven votes in the negative and five votes in the affirmative. Partial or right number five fails. This one, this one has failed. Um, she has the pool. The capital budget. Did, um, did Councilor Fernandez Anderson just leave? We still have one, potentially one final vote on the capital budget. Well, I, I do want to give um, Council Fernandez Anderson the opportunity to be here and speak on it if she, if she, if she chooses. Um, there is a vice chair, but I, I do want to give um, Council Fernandez Anderson the opportunity to speak on it if she is here. So I, I do want to give her, out of respect for her, I do want to give her a couple of minutes. Still on the record, um, Council Fernandez Anderson, were were you pulling the capital budget potential vote? Uh, you want to pull the next one? No. I I I think could. I know with the holidays here, and um, I think it'd be. I think people want to get get want to vote on it now, so it might be, it might be out of the way and save some time at the next meeting. Um. I got to run. I have to, I have to pick up my child. No, I understand. Um, you with do your permission, you? do, with, okay. With your permission, you, um, could I understand. ask Council Rell? No, no, we'll address it next, next week. It's fine. It's fine. Well, no, there's no implications. We're, we, we're, 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 this is a working session? We're, we're in a brief recess.
Back in session. Um, Mr. President, I have to uh, get some documentation before proceeding. Thank you, Council Fernandez Anderson. Just to revisit docket 1132, all of the overrides have failed with the exception of number four. Docket 1132 has been over overridden in part. This constitute approval of the FY24 city budget. Mr. Kirk, do you want? Do, do you want to read all three of them into the record? Mr. Kirk, will you read all three of those into the record? The uh, capital budget. It, yes, as it relates to the capital budget. Document number 0764, message in order for your approval in order authorizing the city of Boston to enter into one or more leases, lease purchase or installment sale agreements for fiscal year 2024 in the amount not to exceed $39 million. These funds are to be used by various city departments for the acquisition of 
equipment in, in furtherance of their respective governmental functions. The list of equipment includes computer equipment, hardware and software, motor vehicle and trailers, ambulances, firefighting equipment, office equipment, telecommunications equipment, photocopying equipment, medical equipment, school and educational equipment, school buses, parking meters, street lighting installation, traffic signal equipment, and equipment functionally related to and components of the foregoing. Filed in the office of the city clerk on April 10th, 2023. Docket number 0767. Message in order for your approval and appropriation in the amount of $657,110,000 for various capital improvement purposes for city departments, including Boston Centers for Youth and Families, Department of Innovation and Technology, the Environment, Fire, Parks and Recreation, Police, Property Management, Public Works and Transportation Departments, Mayor's Office of Housing, Mayor's Office of Arts and Culture, Boston Public Library, Boston Housing Authority, Boston Planning and Development Agency, and the Boston Public Health Commission, filed in the office of the City Clerk on April 10th. Docket number 0768, message not authorizing an appropriation on the amount of 328, $328,160,000 for various capital improvement purposes for the Boston Public Schools, filed in the office of the City Clerk on April 10th, 2023. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. The Chair recognizes Council Fernandez Anderson. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, so, like two weeks ago, every year I drive to the wilderness somewhere in Maine, and I drop off my child there in the jungle somewhere. And it's a wonderful experience. This is his 10th year. So he became counselor, excited about that. But my ID was on the floor on the passenger side, and he opened the door, and I think it fell in the wilderness. So I don't have my ID. Um, and so I have to drive to Maine to go give them some more supplies, camp supplies. Um, and it takes about three hours to get there, um, to get into the woods where he is. Anyway, so I was trying to rush, then I didn't have my ID, I locked myself out, and um, forgot to pull the capital budget. But here we are. Um, the docket, I like to pull docket 0764, 0767, and 0768 on page two of the green sheets. We're on page two? They're properly on the floor. Okay. They, yes, Council Fernandez Anderson, they're, they're properly on the floor. Oh, properly on the floor, thank you. Um, so we took a first vote on the dockets on June 7th, 2023. I ask now that we vote in the affirmative uh, for the second vote. Mr. Clerk, can we do a roll call vote on the first, um, first docket? Uh, second reading uh, on the capital budget docket 0764. Council Arroyo? Yes. Council Arroyo, yes. Council Baker? Aye. Council Baker, aye. Council Braden? Yes. Council Braden, yes. Council Coletta? Yes. Council Coletta, yes. Council Fernandez Anderson? Yes. Council Fernandez Anderson, yes. Council Flaherty? Yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn? Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Lara? Yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Louisiana? Yes. Council Louisiana, yes. Council Mejia? Yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Murphy? Yes. Council Murphy, yes. And Council Worrell? Yes. Councilor Rowe, yes. Docket number 0764 has received its second reading and has passed unanimously. That docket has passed. Mr. Clerk, can we do a, a vote on the second, um, the second capital budget? Second reading capital budget, docket number 0767. Councilor Arroyo? Yes. Councilor Arroyo, yes. Councilor Baker? Aye. Councilor Baker, aye. Councilor Braden? Yes. Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Coletta? Yes. Council Coletta, yes. Council Fernandez Anderson. Yes. Council Fernandez Anderson, yes. Council Flaherty. Yes. Council Flaherty, yes. Council Flynn. Yes. Council Flynn, yes. Council Lara. Yes. Council Lara, yes. Council Louisiana. Council Louisiana, yes. Council Mejia. Yes. Council Mejia, yes. Council Murphy. Yes. Council Murphy, yes. And Council Worrell. Yes. Council Worrell, yes. Docket number 0767 has received its second reading and unanimously passed. That is passed. Uh, Mr. Clerk, the final docket 0768. Docket number 0768, second reading on capital budget. Uh, Council Arroyo? Yes. Council Arroyo, yes. Council Baker? Aye. Council Baker, aye. Council Braden? Yes. 
Councilor Braden, yes. Councilor Coletta. Yes. Councilor Coletta, yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson. Yes. Councilor Fernandez Anderson, yes. Councilor Flaherty. Yes. Councilor Flaherty, yes. Councilor Flynn. Yes. Councilor Flynn, yes. Councilor Lara. Yes. Councilor Lara, yes. Councilor Luigian. Yes. Councilor Luigian, yes. Councilor Mejia. Yes. Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor Murphy. Yes. Councilor Murphy, yes. And Councilor Worrell. Yes. Councilor Worrell, yes. Docket number 0768 has received its second reading and has unanimously passed. This docket has passed. The chair recognizes Council Lara. Council Lara. Thank you, President Flynn. I know that we have had, a, had a long day, and so I'm hoping that we can get this done very quickly. I would like to put a motion on the floor for an amendment to the Boston City Council Rule 4. And that motion requires a second. Thank you, President Flynn. Do I have the floor? Yes. Do, do, you, have a, do you have it written out? Um, yes, Ron is passing it out, and it has been emailed to Christine so that everybody has it in um, electronic form. But Ron has the amended language now. So I Let, will. Let's take a quick break. I mean, let's, let's just hold off until um, Ron passes it out. Yeah, up. absolutely. It's just a sentence, so it's not a, it's not a massive change. Thank you, Ron. I think you've given me more than one copy. The changes that are made to Rule 4 in the document that are passed on to you are italicized in the second version? Um, the Chair recognizes Council of Laura. Thank you, President Flynn. I think given what we've learned um, today, I think it's in the interest of this body to clarify our rules to match our practices. I think that President Flynn and the clerk are correct in their assessment of how our rules are currently written, but I do believe that they're not in alignment with the way that we have been doing work here on the council for decades. Uh, the council is a democratic body, and it has historically practiced its right to put in question the decision of the chair, and we've done so for decades, most recently, my council colleague from District 1 has moved to assign our redistricting process to the Civil Rights Committee, where Councilor Luigian was able to lead us through the process of redrawing our district lines. Although I believe that there are decisions that should be the sole responsibility of the president as the elected representative of this body, uh, the city council uses the parliamentary procedure as um, for a reason. This is not a dictatorship, it is a democracy. And I believe that the council president and the clerk um, ultimately make committee assignments in good faith. But in the event that there is a disagreement, putting the judgment of the chair into question, uh, which also requires a majority vote of the body um, to vote in favor of it for making a change, uh, I think it's proper practice. And it has been proper practice in this chamber for decades, as I've mentioned. And I'm asking my colleagues to vote in favor of clarifying Rule 4 so that we can continue this process in proper parliamentary procedure. There are two changes that I will read on to the record. Uh, the question that we had on the floor was whether or not questions of order uh, included assignments of matters to committee. And based on the uh, feedback of the city council's legal um, staff and also the parliamentarian, there was a decision that um, questions of order does not include assignments of matters to committee, and so I've included and assignments of matter to committee are subject to an appeal. The last sentence has been changed, and it's only for clarification. I think that we often, when we're voting in the affirmative, we often get confused on whether or not we're voting yes, that we are allowing the judgment of the chair to stand, or whether we're, or whether we're voting yes, that we agree with what the person proposing the motion is agreeing with. And so at the advice of some of our staff, there was a clarification that states that the, question, that the question should be put as follows. This is already there. That shall the decision of the chair stand as the judgment of the council, question mark. And the change, a vote to appeal, shall require a majority of those present and be taken by roll call, which is our current process. It's just a matter of going from Old English to New English and clarifying how we make the decision. Um, I'm happy to hear from any of my other council colleagues, but I think given what we've done, I would like to move this for a vote. Thank you, President Flynn. Thank you, Council Lara. The chair recognizes Council of Flaherty. Council Flaherty, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. Through the chair to the clerk, is this a late file matter? The, the chair recognizes um, Council Lara. 
this is not a late file matter. This is just a motion that it's a par part of parliamentary procedure, I believe, that can be uh, put onto the floor at any moment during our meeting. OK. Um, well, there is a motion on the floor from Council Lara. Is there a second? Um, does anyone like to sp would like to speak on this? Would or, or Council Council Lara, would you like this to go into the Rules Committee uh, for a discussion where we can properly discuss it? Um, Council Mejia, would you? Council Mejia? Um, I, no, but I, I, you, were, you were saying something to Council Lara. Um, no, I know, but you were saying something to Council Lara. Um, is there something you'd like to add? No, I was saying I would like, since it's doing the motion, I'd like to finish it here. I don't want to have to go to the rules. I want to have the business. I think it might be, okay. Chair recognizes Councilor Murphy. Um, thank you, Council President. I would like to motion that this goes into the Rules Committee and that we have a conversation and that I don't know is Christine O'Donnell, our Council Attorney here, that we could talk to her now or is she gone for the evening? Do we know? I think it would be appropriate for us to put it in the Rules Committee right. or at it least... It doesn't mean we, we, we can... It will, come to a vote, but after it goes through the committee and we have conversation about what these ramifications mean. Did she recognize this council, Lara? I'm sorry. Thank you, President Flynn. Um, it is not typically um, parliamentary procedure or the procedure of this council that we move motions uh, into committees for um, discussion. This uh, rule change is not actually changing anything to the way that we do business. It's just clarifying the way that we've been doing anything. We've all been here on the council as we've used rule four to redirect hearing orders to different committees. Uh, we are just codifying the way that we already do business on the council. Uh, and that's to say again that I think the clerk and the councilor and Christine were right in their uh, assessment of what rule four actually said. And so what was made obvious to me uh, is that it wasn't in alignment with our actual practices. So this is just a change to make it so that what we do is already into the rules. And so I am going to be moving for a vote on this motion today. Thank you. Yeah, I understand that. I just want to make sure that if we vote on something, um, it's, it's legal for us to implement it. I have and checked with the city council lawyers to excuse make sure. Me? I've ran this language by one of the lawyers on the city council central staff to make sure that it was good. Before I mean, I would, I would, as the president, I would like to at least discuss it. This is the first time I'm, I'm, I'm really reading about it. I've had several. <coughs> excuse me, council member here. No. I've had several rules committee hearings in the past, and many, many of my colleagues haven't even showed up. Um, I, th I think it's appropriate to be in the rules committee and give everybody an opportunity to speak about it, and and allow central staff legal counsel to speak about it as well. I appreciate your interest in having proper process, President Flynn, but it is the right of the council to move for a motion to change rules on the floor. Uh, we have done this before. Councilor Edwards put a motion to change a rule on the floor and the city council uh, voted on it at the time. So I would like to move for a vote on this motion. Chair recognizes Council Baker. Mr. President, uh, I, I'm not sure, but can, are we allowed to, do, to introduce something and vote on it the same day? With Rule 13, if one person... Um, it's not a late file. It's, it's not a late file. It's not anything it's like motion. this is procedural. Okay. Thank you. The Chair recognizes Council Flaherty. Council Thank you, Mr. President. Through the Chair to the Clerk, it's a rule change after the Council has adopted rules. Does that require a majority or two-thirds? Two-thirds. Thank you. She recognizes Councilor Mejia, then um, Councilor Murphy. Yes. Um, I have been told that I am the official translator here in this chamber, too, that I have helped people understand what people are not saying when they do cut up. But I, I do, I think, in the interest of being democratic and understanding what this moment is calling for, 
I think that the more clear that we can get in terms of how we do business, we won't see situations like what happened with um, having our colleagues stripped away of their chairmanships, of having uh, playing ping pong of who's going to be the new chair of what district, I mean, uh, uh, redistricting that whole situation. Like, no, nah, we need to stop. And I would feel more comfortable and confident being in a chamber that I have an understanding of something that is consistent and that is not going to be used if and when it is of political interest to certain bodies. So I would um, ask that we maintain the integrity of how we're going to conduct our business here. And I'd like to uh, aggressively ask that we put this into a motion for a vote today. The chair recognizes Councilor Murphy. Councilor Murphy, you have the floor. Just one quick thing. If it wasn't Council, um, I mean, our city council, Christine O'Donnell, it was it, um, Michelle Goldberg is here. So could she speak to the council to explain so that I'm confident in my vote? So I would appreciate that if our central staff director explains to us on the council before we take a vote. And I would just also say that um, at least once, maybe twice, when this did happen, it was a, an order that I filed, and many did not agree with the parliamentary rule, and other concerns did come up after that did happen. So I just want to put that out on the floor that it wasn't something. And even after, I do know that our central staff attorney agreed that it shouldn't have happened that way before. So to base it on something that many people think shouldn't have happened, I don't think is a good idea. So I would like to hear from our attorney what she says on this. Thank you. We're in a brief recess. Failed meal. <laughs> We're back in session. There's more discussion on the floor. At this time, I'm going to call on Council Royal. Council Royal, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. I know there were some questions there about uh, the legality or, or whatever. Uh, most of my most of this body was here actually for when Councilor Edwards has changed rules in the past. Some of us have been here uh, certainly longer than myself and understand that how rules get changed and added, it takes two thirds votes. But my question particularly to this rule, just so that I'm clear on what this rule does, as I read it, I think I'm clear on what it does, but essentially this rule it allows us to appeal where the chair assigns committees. It, it, essentially, it, it, if not assigns committees, but rather where they assign hearing orders or what have you, resolutions, if they go to a committee, this allows us to appeal where that is sent. This is clarifies that language. Is that accurate? The, the chair recognizes Council Lara. Thank you, President Flynn. That is correct. This is just codifying the practice of allowing the will of the majority of the council to be heard. Uh, I think that this um, council as a body has been and is allowed to disagree with the chair. And this just codifies our practice of ensuring that we have majority vote when we are disagreeing with the chair and make those changes. This is, again, 
not a new process. This is how we have been doing work and how we've been functioning on the council uh, at least for the last three decades as far as I can go back. This is just about codifying and making it clear. So if this council is allowed to disagree with the chair as a body, it, is already, it was already codified there that we can um, put to question the um, decisions uh, of the chair. Uh, it was just unclear whether or not that was including um, assigning matters to committee, which is what we've been doing. We have been functioning as if it does include that, and now we are just trying to codify it so that there is not further confusion about our practices on the floor. And I would also just like to ask um, the president if you could, because Councilor Murphy had questions for Michelle, just share um, what the conversation was or if you have any extra information for us. That, yeah, thank you, Council Lara. Um, Council, Council Murphy, and, yes. and, and again, um, I know it's late in the hour. This is an important rule. This is an important decision, so I'm, I'm fine staying here for another hour and a half with everybody um, and talking about this. Um, but I want to get, I want to make sure we get this thing right. Uh, the chair recognizes Councilor, Councilor Murphy. Sure, I did just want to reiterate that I would like to hear from Attorney Goldberg what the conversation was that you came to the conclusion that we should pass this. And I also would like to, um, if you could read maybe the clerk, because you have the rules in front of you, the rule about placing hearing orders into committees. And I do really wish that our attorney, Christine O'Donnell, who does deal with this and sits in every meeting and talks with the president and the clerk when there are any questions, is not here anymore. Uh, let, let, let me just... Um, Thank let, you, Council President. That was it. But if we could read that other rule about the committees. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to I'm gonna respond to Council Murphy, um, and then, then, I'll, then I'll call on you, Councilor. Just to let everybody know, at 10 o'clock before um, the meeting on Wednesday, I sit down with City Council, Central Staff, with, with Legal Council, with the clerk, with the clerk, with the Assistant Clerk, and we discuss and review where each docket should be assigned to, to what committee, and after a discussion, each person weighs in what, what committee it should be assigned to. Uh, sometimes we spend 10, 15 minutes dealing with one docket. We want to make sure we get it right. In that meeting is, is, is the clerk, the assistant clerk, the, the legal counsel, the central staff director, and, and, and my staff as well. Um, but we don't take these decisions lightly. We thoroughly review them. Um, it does take it does take some decision making away from the council president, but it also takes decision making away from the clerk, the assistant clerk, uh, city council, central staff, um, and legal council, and they have thoroughly reviewed that decision before um, it even has come to this body. So this body can make that decision based on what they think the political right decision is, do, is, but we make the decision based on where it should go, based on how the, how the hearing order is written. So there's, there's a distinction in my, in, in regards to the influence of the city council president in the decision making process in the, in the body as a whole, because now we can just question for political reasons where we want to place a, a document. Um, I think that's, that will, Council Mia? I think that will negatively impact, impact the body. I would ask, I would ask my colleagues when I, when someone is speaking, please not to, um, interrupt. The chair recognizes Council Lara. Thank you, President Flynn. I just wanted to, um, two things. One, to clarify because of Councillor Murphy's statement that Director Goldberg did not say that this should pass. I just, just I want to be clear that she is not uh, advocating for any of this change. But I went to um, Director Goldberg to uh, to ensure that the language was legal and that it was possible to put there. And so that is, I just want to be be clear um, because Director Goldberg works for all of the city councilors, and I want to I don't want to misrepresent what her advice to me was on the floor. And I think, um, second, I just want to acknowledge um, what you just said about your process. I am not at all questioning the rigor of the process um, between you and the rest of central staff, the clerk. This is not about 
um, taking away your power to make committee assignments. That is a power that has been given to you as the elected representative of this body. This is just about giving the city council the ability to disagree with a decision when we disagree with a decision. And it's a power that we have been practicing before, and this is just about clarifying that. I don't want anybody else besides the president, the clerk, to make decisions about where committee assignments go. I think your process uh, is well received and typically the hearing orders go and everybody's in agreement to where they need to go. But rule four is about giving us the opportunity that when we disagree, we have the codified power as we have been doing historically to disagree with the chair, that is it. So I just don't wanna, I wanna make sure that you're clear that I'm not trying to undermine your process. This is just about strengthening the democratic process and the parliamentary procedure of the city council. Thank, thank you, Council Laro. Um, there was a question. Um, I know I did have the opportunity also to t talk to Attorney Goldberg, who did basically confirm what you have outlined, Council Alara. Um, let me let me call on Councilor Braden. Council Braden, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President, and I think really what uh, we what we're trying to get to is really that uh, we're trying to codify something that's actually happened. And historically, the um, the members of the council have have asked to have a vote on whether or not the, the the body agrees with the decision of the chair to allocate a particular docket to a particular committee. And looking at the the track record going back to 1995, it seemed to happen in pretty regular occurrence. And nine times out from the record, it shows that, yes, the, the city <coughs> council voted on whether or not to accept the chair's decision. And a lot of the times, they agreed with the chair that it was the appropriate place to send a docket. Um, so I think really we just uh, uh, would like to uh, you know have that opportunity that if there's a, a difference of opinion <coughs> that uh, the chair would would bring it to bring it we would have the opportunity to to have a vote on it. It's, it will not necessarily we're not not questioning your your prerogative to allocate something to a certain committee, but uh, we also want to assert the historical reality that. It, that in the past, uh, council members have asked to have a, vote, a, a roll call vote on the decision of where the, the committee, where that docket ends up in a committee. Thank, Thank you. you, Council Brayden. And I'm going to call on Council Mejia, then Council Murphy. <coughs> let, let me let me also respond briefly by saying, before I even make a decision um, at that 10 o'clock meeting, um, about five people speak before I do, and and they also recommend where the committee should go to. Almost 99% of the time, I take their decision and in, 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 in make that decision based on what I hear from, from my colleagues. Um, but they spend a lot of time reviewing this legally. They, they also look through the clerk's notes to make sure this is appropriate. Um, it's not something that is done just for political reasons or in the interest of in the interest of um, being convenient. We do this intentionally to make sure it does go to the appropriate committee. I think it's a, it's a good process. It takes the politics away from it and puts it in the appropriate body. It puts it in the appropriate committee and. I think, I think in the long run, it will help the body keeping, keeping the, the rule as it is. Um, and the next president after me, it will impact them negatively, in, in my opinion. The chair recognizes Council Mejia. Council Mejia, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just kind of want to reaffirm again why I think it's so important for us, given the history of this particular council and the way we have moved or have not moved, I would feel, um, uh, I would trust this process more um, if we had something that was codified because I remember when the um, redistricting situation went down, um, I even when I tried to keep bringing it back up, we kept being censored. And so if this is gonna prevent us from 
having a free-for-all and people making decisions based on what they think is politically um, astute, this prevents, this actually gives us um, affirmation that we can't move in that way because then that, we will all have a voice in that decision. And so that is what I'm asking for and I want to reaffirm again that I would like to take a vote on this particular updated rule today. Thank you, Council Mejia. Um, again, I'll, I'll, I'm going to repeat myself again, is we spend a lot of time every Wednesday going over the agenda, and actually it starts on Tuesday by the clerk's office and by city council central staff reviewing it and my staff. Um, it takes the politics away from it. It makes the body better. It makes the body stronger. It, 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 it allows the president, based on the recommendations from the clerk, the assistant clerk, the city council central staff, to make a decision that's in the best interest of the body, the best interest of the city, and not politics. I'm not saying people play politics here, but I'm saying it takes politics out of it because the clerk and the assistant clerk and the city council central staff and attorney practically make the decision before it even gets to me. Um, and I don't want to. I don't want to weaken the board. I don't want to weaken the president's position because I'm almost done with it. I don't want to see the next person um, be limited in what he or she can do. I don't think that's fair. Um, let me let me call on Council Murphy. Council Murphy, you Thank have the floor, and then I'm going to go to Council Royal. Thank you. So as we know, every two years the rules change, and one of the things, the first thing we do is we vote on the rules and which then include our committee assignments after we vote on the president. And many of the references that Councilor Lara made earlier were back in 1995. And at that time, there was Rule 20, which is not a rule we have now, committee assignment in action. And Rule 20 did say then, when a petition, order, or resolution relates to a subject which may properly be examined and reported upon by an existing committee of the council, such order or resolution shall, upon presentation, be referred to such committee, and when a motion is made to refer any subject in different committees in, are proposed, the motion shall be put in the following order, and it explains more. So that was a rule. So many of the references then, it was because it was a rule that that current body had voted on at the beginning of that two-year term. I agree that we should look through. Council President, thank you. I think we had three meetings this since you've been president. I've been president at all of them. I think two of them, it was just me, you, and the clerk, and Michelle Goldberg, our central staff attorney, and Christine going through them. And we did then also look at words and look at old language and talked about updating some of them and knowing that in January there will be a new set of rules that we vote on. So I'm, I did just want to make it clear, though, that many of the references that were made earlier about when this body was able to vote and change a committee, it's because it was one of the rules we were working with then. So thank you, Council thank, President. Thank you, Council Murphy. That, that is the, the first thing we actually do as a body is vote on the rules. Mm -hmm. And just to re reiterate what Council Murphy has said, as the, as the chair of the, of the rules, we had th three hearings. And most of my colleagues weren't here. They weren't here to participate in, in the hearing. We read every rule verbatim, word by word. We discussed them. The clerk was there. The assistant clerk was there. Um, but the majority of the colleagues weren't here. Now we want to change the rules at the last minute without a thorough process, a thorough review. Um, I, I, would, I would like to ask my colleagues to get more involved in coming into the office and discussing the rules and being part of the decision making on, on rules because it's, it's frustrating when you have a hearing as, as Councilor Tanya, as Council Fernandez Anderson was saying on ways and means when no one shows up. And that's what was happening at the Rules Committee. I had three, three hearings and most of my colleagues didn't even bother showing up. I've had some colleagues, I won't call them out, but I've had some colleagues that didn't show up for any of the three, three hearings. Um, so I'm trying to be fair to everybody, but I also want people to understand that I put the time and the energy and the 
and the effort into making these rules the best they can be. And I, I do need your cooperation. I think this is, I'm gonna obviously vote against it. I think this will negatively impact the body because it's gonna put politics in play. The chair recognizes Council Alara. Council Alara, you have the floor. Thank you, President Flynn. Um, um, a couple of things. One, yes, um, if Councillor Murphy is reading some of the rules from 1995, but the examples that I gave were not just from 1995. This body this year during this session has used Rule 4 to make recommendations about where hearing orders should be assigned to committees at minimum three times during the session. So again, this is just about codifying the rule in action as it always has been. So if you want to take Councillor Murphy's argument and say that, fine, there was a rule in 1995, we as a body here during our time in this session has have um, practically used Rule 4 for that purpose. I want to reiterate again um, that failure to participate in hearings on the City Council does not preclude any member of this body from mm -hmm. putting a motion on the floor. That's I don't fine. attend rule hearings because I understand all of the rules. That does not at all stop me from putting a motion on the floor to make a change. It doesn't stop anybody. Uh, it doesn't take anybody's right because as a member of this elected body, I have a right to make a motion, which is what I am doing now. And so I understand uh, people's hesitations. Well, you know what? I don't understand people's hesitations because, again, this is just a word change to something that we have already been doing. In terms of whether or not this is going to weaken the position of the president, I want to just reaffirm again that 99.9% .9 of the time, there is no disagreement about where hearing orders are being sent. This is just codifying that the City Council has the ability that 0.1% of the time to disagree with the chair. That is how democracy works. And my hope is that all of my colleagues are committed to maintaining a democratic process in this body. That is why we follow parliamentary procedure. Uh, and so with all of that said, I would really like to move the question at the moment, please. Mr. Clark, we're gonna take a roll call vote. as presented by Councillor Lara. Councillor Arroyo? Yes. Councillor Arroyo, yes. Councillor Baker? Nay. Councillor Baker, nay. Councillor Braden? Yes. Councillor Braden, yes. Councillor Coletta? Yes. Councillor Coletta, yes. Councillor Fernandez Anderson? Yes. Councillor Fernandez Anderson, yes. Councillor Flaherty? No. Councillor Flaherty, no. Councillor Flynn? No. Councillor Flynn, no. Councillor Lara? Yes. Councillor Lara, yes. Councillor Louisiana? Yes. Councillor Louisiana, yes. Councillor Mejia? Councilor Mejia, yes. Councilor Murphy? No. Councilor Murphy, no. And Councilor Worrell? Yes. Councilor Worrell, yes. The motion has received eight votes in the affirmative and four votes in the negative. It has received two-thirds majority. It has passed. Yes. <clears throat> We're on to the, oh yeah. We're on to the consent agenda. We do have one late file matter that, the chair moves for adoption of the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. aye. Thank you, the consent agenda has been adopted. We're on to, Memorials. Today we're going to adjourn our meeting in memory of the following individuals. For Councillor Arroyo, Luisa Gandara, and William Pete Williams. For Councillor Baker, Frank Bathano, Michael Clooney. For Councillor Baker, Flynn, Murphy, and Flaherty, Lou Pasquale, member of the Disabled American Veterans. Council Braden, Michael, Pakinsey, for Councilors Flynn and Flaherty, Helen Eileen McCarthy, for Council Flaherty, Nicholas Popolos, Popolos and Manny Ligueros, for Councilor Louis Jean, George Phillips, 
Tabatha, Aliyah, Lehi, William Pete Williams, for Councillor Murphy, Ronald Russell, April Ritchie, Eugene Ford, Mary Alana, Mary Alana Ricker, a moment of silence, please. The chair moves that when the council adjourns today, we do so in memory of those individuals mentioned. We are scheduled to meet again in the Ayanala Chamber on Wednesday, July 19th at 12 noon. Before we adjourn, I do want to acknowledge Boston Police Officer William Larry, who's retiring Friday, 30 years as a patrolman in the city of Boston. Um, yeah, okay, okay, Mike Larry, retiring on, on Friday. Um, I also want to say thank you to the clerk, the assistant clerk, my city council colleagues, city council central staff, the stenographer, and my colleagues. Um, we're adjourned. Thank you.